All right. Welcome back to the 2022 Global Happiness Summit. We're so excited to start day three. Um, it's been fun. We've had some great speakers. We also know that we've had some technology challenges over the last couple of days, and that's what we learn when we use new technology is where all the faults are. And so we've had thousands of people help us figure it out. Um, and so they've worked on the servers overnight, and hopefully you can get in. I will say, uh, if you're in now and you log out and come back in, sometimes it's taking up to 30 seconds to a minute to queue for it to reopen. So just know that it will reopen. It's just taking a little longer. So they were working on upgrading servers this morning. But yes, the fun of technology. But at least, hey, we can still bring the summit to you. All the recordings are available in the app um, and online. So you can certainly watch all the recordings if you've missed anything. Uh, but we do certainly welcome everyone back. We're super excited this morning. Uh, Joy. Joanna Brady is with us this morning, and That's we're Brandy, honey. I'm gonna Brandy. Sorry, <laughs> look at look at me, and you I'm know looking me right well. at it. I don't it. know about Brady. that. <laughs> All of a sudden, I made you the Brady bunch. Brandy, sorry about that. Uh, author of 54 Ways to Stay Positive in a Changing, Challenging, and Sometimes Negative World, has been a happiness coach and business coach for almost 20 years. She's certified chief happiness officer, and she's been a speaker, writer, and consultant for over 30 years. And most importantly, she's just a really good friend of Bright Vibe, myself. Um, we love her to death. She's actually going to help us right after the, uh, the summit. We have a 21-day happiness challenge, and that's going to be kind of facilitated and guided by Joanna. And so we're super excited because she literally wrote the book on happiness and staying positive. So we love that. So we're going to use some of the book. So if you'd like to, to go out and buy the book, you can go out and buy the book uh, prior to. Um, but certainly on, I think we're kicking off on Tuesday, the 19th, we're going to have our 21 days of happiness challenge. And when I say challenge, really, it's just challenging you to do things that bring you happiness over 21 days. It's not going to be difficult. And then we're going to allow, or we're going to encourage people to post the things that they're doing, uh, no matter how small or how big post those things. So it inspires others so that we can really build this just ball of happiness in our community to kind of kick off our bright vibe community. So we're super excited not only to hear today about 18 ways to stay positive, but then also to have her guide us over the next three weeks with our 21 day happiness challenge. So Joanna, thank you so much for being here. I'm so honored and so blessed uh, that you joined us this morning and I'm really looking forward to this presentation. And I get very excited. And you know, you started talking about upgrading the servers. That's what this is all about. When you think right. about it, this hard drive hasn't had an upgrade in about 250,000 years. <laughs> so what we're literally doing is upgrading this server here. Great. Perfect. And, and I also want to mention that jo Joanna is going to do the presentation and, and talk about these very important things. And then from time to time, I'll pop back in. So if you yeah. have questions, have comments, we will be reading the questions. We will be answering questions. We will be uh, checking the chat boxes, but it'll just be uh, sporadically throughout the presentation. So I'll be monitoring that kind of from backstage. So certainly, uh, please feel free to write any comments, write any uh, anything that... Um, I, we already have somebody saying, yippee, thank you for the recorded videos. That's awesome. And uh, how can I sign up for that challenge? And we'll let you know um, here uh, throughout the time. You'll, there'll be plenty of information. We'll be sending out emails and also doing a video on that. So thank you guys so much for attending. And let's get into the presentation. And thank you for saying that because, you know, once you wind me up, it's hard to wind me down. <laughs> What you're learning it comes mostly from the field of positive psychology, which is also known as the science of happiness, the science of what goes right, the science of high performance, the science of thrival. And I like to think of it as the science of flourishing because I want a flourishing life. Happy people have 65% more energy. Happy people are 31% more productive, three and 10 times more creative. And that blows my mind because what happens when you get happy, when you are in a positive emotion, is the right hemisphere of your brain and the left hemisphere of your brain be begin to communicate very well together and you become way more creative and innovative. Happy people are 43% more adaptable to change. And isn't that what we need today in this world that changes by the minute? They're 44% more engaged. And of course, now we know that optimists live six to nine years longer than pessimists. So I'm going to give you 18 ways. And the first way is change the way you look at happiness. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. You know, we grow up in this country, at least believing that we have these unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
But when I began studying positive psychology, my beautiful, wonderful teacher, the cross-cultural anthropologist, Angelise Arian, was still alive. And she said to me, wait a minute, Joanna, did you know that in Thomas Jefferson's day, pursuit actually meant practice? So that set me off on a new path because the, our founding father didn't we mean that we should be running around chasing happiness. He just meant we're supposed to be practicing it. So let's talk about this. Number two, think of happiness as a practice. It's a process, not a place. It's a habit and a really good one. It's a skill that can be learned and practiced every day, which is what I do. For me, it's a work ethic because I am not genetically happy. So I have to work at it. It's a choice that changes your brain, physically changes your brain. It's like a muscle that you exercise. If you want stronger biceps, you have to lift the weights. It doesn't just feel good. Now we know it's good for you. It's being considered in the workplace, the new productivity. And actually it's quite a good competitive business strategy. Happiness is not a vague state of mind. It's a specific measurable physical state of the body. There's distinct brain activity. There are distinct heart rhythms and a distinct body chemistry. In fact, it's not a state of mind at all. It's a state of body mind. Every time you have a thought or a feeling, your body's gonna make a chemical. And I, I do thought feeling like that because sometimes it's hard to tell whether we have the feeling first and then the thought, but it's usually the thought and then the feeling. So when you have a thought or feeling of goodness, your body creates what I call the chemicals of calm. That's serotonin and oxytocin and things like that that turn on your parasympathetic nervous system so your body can heal. But when you're having thoughts or feelings of negativity, you create the chemicals of fear. That's adrenaline, it, cortisol, the kinds of things that are designed to make us, our, our larger muscles really strong so we can fun, we can uh, fight or run if we have to. What's really interesting is you know where that's going to, you know, that it, it goes right to our thighs. <laughs> all of the energy in our body goes into our thighs and our big muscles so we can get away. But all that energy is now taken away from our digestive system and our immune system and the other things that are there so that we can be balanced. Okay. Okay, there it is. And then what happens once we have that thought or feeling because we are beautiful storytellers as human beings is that we begin turning story, telling stories and those internal stories that we tell can either spiral up into something really wonderful or spiral down into what I call the rabbit hole. And I'm sure lots of you have been in the rabbit hole. Number three, notice what you notice. This is the very first thing that I teach in my positive leadership training. Notice what you notice. Pay attention to where your attention is going. Where attention goes, energy flows. But when your attention darts back and forth like a squirrel, it's very hard for you to create things, to get things done, to feel good and productive about yourself. So check in frequently to see where your attention is. If you're in the habit of multitasking, just stop because the brain actually can't do that. And what you're doing over and over again is frustrating yourself. Number four, this is something I learned from Marcy Shimoff, who you had yesterday. I was sitting in a uh, women's conference. It must be, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And Marcy was speaking and she spoke these words. She said, don't believe everything you think and I nearly fell off my chair, and I'll tell you why. I was raised by lawyers and nuns. I learned Latin. I grew up in that time where we believed that what we thought was everything. So that blew my mind. It's taken me a lot of years to unravel that and figure out what it means, but absolutely don't believe everything you think because we think 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. 95% of those thoughts today are the same ones as yesterday, and 80% of those are negative. So you wanna be careful, you gotta watch that mind, that monkey mind, as they call it, because the thoughts you think make up the stories you tell about yourself and others, and that becomes the dramas that we play out in our lives. But the most important story that you tell is the one 
you tell yourself. Number five, choose victorious. How you interpret any situation has everything to do with how your body responds. So if you are in the mode of dramatizing, and I must say I'm guilty of that from time to time, dramatizing, catastrophizing, awfulizing, or disasterizing, your primal brain is acting as if the saber-toothed tiger is going to jump out of a tree and you are going to produce those negative chemicals, which actually just shut down the, the very important functions of the mid-body. So try to make a different choice or just make a different choice. Where can you be more grateful, more appreciative? How could you be more humorous about these situations that are happening to us, right? How can you look at a situation with awe or wonder? There are so many ways to look at situations. Here's a way that makes you feel victorious, not victim. Number six, one of my favorites, expect miracles. Miracles do happen, but miracles happen mostly to people who believe in them. They come frequently when you open the door and let them in. We all have the power to create miracles in our lives. Outsmart the crocodile. <laughs> That's how I think of this primal brain. Outsmart the crocodile. Dr. Rick Hansen had a great way of talking about negative emotions and positive emotions. Negative emotions stick like Velcro. Positive emotions slide off like Teflon. So when you have a negative emotion, it's gonna stay with you for a long time. And there's a biological reason for that. If you really were in danger, your brain needs to store the information. It stores it in a place called the amygdala, which is in the primal brain. And it, I, I like to call it the little, data, the little database of horrors, because every, if, if everything that goes wrong in your life gets stuck there and you're not processing it out or balancing it out, going to have a lot of things are going to make you feel negative. So remember that those negative emotions stick like Velcro and the positive emotions slide off like Teflon. So we need more of those. Barbara Fredrickson, another one of my teachers at the University of North Carolina, says that three to one is the tipping point, the tipping point between languishing and flourishing. I teach a different ratio. I teach a five to one ratio because that's known as the high performance ratio. So when I work with teams, we're striving for at least a five to one ratio, five times more appreciation, five times more gratitude, five times more focus on what's strong rather than on what's wrong. And there's so many studies now that tell us the human body actually works best when it's positive five times more than negative. And the beautiful work being done by Dr. John Gottman and his wife for over 40 years not even related to positive psychology, tells us that happy marriages have a five to one positivity to negativity ratio. So think about that. Get what, do what you can to build up your positivity ratio. And that book is great, by the way, Barbara's book. So what we want to do is train our brains to be happier because we now know that the brain is, they use the word neuroplasticity. It's capable of growing well into our 90s. We used to believe that the brain stopped growing at about age 28, but that's baloney. Now we know that we can train our brain to be happier. So when you bring in more of these positive emotions and when you do it on a more regular basis, what you're doing is you're creating new neural pathways in your brain because neurons that fire together, wire together. So the more positivity you bring in, the stronger the new neural pathways will become. And it doesn't mean you won't ever be unhappy or it doesn't mean you won't ever be negative, but you will recover faster and able to get back on track quicker. This is my sort out your worries ritual. I love this. This is from the book too. There's a couple of things here that have been in the book. Okay, my worry ritual, write a worry list. Three minutes, set a timer, write down everything. I mean, everything that worries you. Then go through and sort that out to two lists, the things you can do something about and the things you can't do anything about. Then take your can't do list, rip it up, put it in a bowl or however you, I use the spaghetti pot, put it in a bowl or a spaghetti pot or a fireplace 
and burn it. I'm big on rituals. I think rituals have deep significance. And when I watch that smoke go up, I am giving those troubles away to the universe, to God, to however you um, define your source or higher power. I'm letting it go and going, you know, there's nothing I can do about this thing. So you take care of it, angels, and I'm going to get back to the things I can do something about. So I love that ceremonious smoke. So just tell yourself as that smoke is going, I'm letting this go. I can't do anything about it. I'm letting it go. So now go to the other list, the things I can do something about, and then write a plan to alleviate the worries. And this is a wonderful ritual to, to kind of clear yourself out from the stuff that nags at you. Number 10, do appreciation audits three to five times during the day. Stop what you're doing. Write down three to five things you appreciate about your work, your day, your life, your activities. I'm looking at my desk because one of my clients printed up the greatest little appreciation audit pads and then gave them out to their staff. <laughs> but I thought I had it right here, but I don't. Three to five times during the day, stop what you're doing. Think about three to five things that you appreciate. Now, most people say, oh, no, how, how, could I, how could I do that? I'm going to tell you how to do that. You pair it up with another habit you already have. So if you're in the habit of drinking water, of getting up from your desk to get a snack, Something else that you do on a regular basis, go to the restroom, pair it up with that. So let's say you get, I have water in my cup today. So let's say you get your cup of water, put it down. I like to put my hand on my heart because it, it starts the flow of oxytocin in the body. And think about three to five things you appreciate. Write them down. I'll let the good feeling spread in your body. Now, over time, what that's going to do, and this happens really quickly, if you're doing it three to five times during the day and you're habit stacking with something you already do, over time, it's going to shift the way you look at things because you are going to notice more things to appreciate. One of the things I do in the business world is work with groups of CEOs, and they, they're shocked when they look at this. I challenge them to do it, and they are shocked after they do it because they, don't, they didn't think that looking for little things to appreciate could make them feel so good. But I would say, give it a try. Do an appreciation audit, audit, and that will help you build the muscle to build your positivity ratio. Ah, savor. Immerse yourself in an experience. This is, this is one of my favorite things. When I studied happiness, my first teacher was Dr. Martin Seligman, the founding father of positive psychology. And I took the Authentic Happiness Coaching course. And they had us in, uh, it was a six month course. They had us in groups, they called them pods. So we went to us, we, we would study with him or another teacher for an hour. And then we would take another hour and work with our pods. And we had done all sorts of testing. You know, he's got lovely uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. You can still find it at their website. Um, there's these instruments, they, call, they don't call them tests, they call them assessments, I think, of where you are. And, and, and one thing that I discovered at the time is that I, my, I scored very high in things like engagement, you know, and, and meaning, but I was really low on pleasure. So each one of us had to build up the part where we were low. So good for me. My job was to learn how to slow down and savor. Now I can spend hmm, a good 60 seconds eating one tiny little piece of dark chocolate. And each time I do that, not, not only am I getting the benefit from the dark chocolate, but I am getting the benefit of the experience of slowing down and being present. So learning how to savor is what helped me learn how to be more mindful in the moment. Most of us go through life never challenging ourselves to feel even better. I call it, how good can you stand it? How much goodness can you stand? Can you drink in more of the sweetness of life? 
can you drink in more of the goodness of life, the happiness of life, the, the, the mental models of how we grow up in this country and many others is about hard work, is about, I, I'm true and hard work is necessary. I'm not, I, I mean, I own my own business, I know this, but the sweetness of life is also really, really important. I think that's the gift of age, the gift of wisdom is really understanding how to balance those things, the things that need to be done and the things that make life sweet. So how much goodness can you feel? Can you, can you give yourself something every day? That's, it doesn't have to be food, but something that's sweet, uh, a piece of music that you absolutely love to listen to and, and get into a place where you can move your body along with it and really feel the rapture and the ecstasy of, of movement. There are so many emotions that we don't talk about that are positive. <laughs> oh, just going, I happen to live near the beach. And I go almost every day and I tend to go at the end of the day when the clouds are co colors that you don't usually see in the sky. There are pinks and there are blues and there are purples. And I will just stand there and soak it in because savoring is part of my positivity practice. And learn how to spiral up instead of spiral down. We are really living in a very negative culture right now. And so if you start a story off and you allow yourself, you're gonna spiral down because that's the weight of what we're living with right now. But make it a point to say to yourself, as you're telling a story, say to yourself, are you spiraling up or are you spiraling down? Because you can take that story into a beautiful, fabulous, wonderful place if you learn how to step up to spiral up. This is beautiful. I'm doing great on timing, by the way, Matt. So we got plenty of room for questions and plenty of room for interaction here. So I want you to outsmart your happiness set point. And right after this, we'll take a little, uh, we'll take questions and uh, I'm gonna get my friend Matt back on the screen here with me. So number 13, outsmart your happiness set point. You wanna blow your mind? This is what blew my mind when I was studying. We all have a happiness set point. It's like an emotional thermostat. It keeps us at a certain level because the body has a built-in adaptation response. So let's say you get a cold or a flu, your fever goes up, right? Your body, that's a reason that your fever goes up to fight the infection, but then eventually your fever comes down because that's part of the adaptation response. A lot of people who struggle with weight, notice that there's an adaptation response. You know, there comes a certain point in that diet where you don't lose weight anymore because your body is adapting. Your body is adapting. And for many people, it wants to go back to what you were biologically built for. You can outsmart that a little bit, yes. And I think we need to take a look at all the places in our lives that we have set points. And we know we have a happiness set point. When you look for happiness outside, when you say, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when I get the new car, I'll be happy when I get the new red shoes, I'll be happy when I get the new client, I'll be happy when I get whatever, the vacation. Sure you will. You'll be happy for about two months. The adaptation response takes about two months to kick in. Um, this, is, this has been a hard thing to, to convince corporate clients of uh, because there's still, a, and, and listen, people do respond to money. We all want to raise. Uh, but when, when organizations feel like, well, if I just give people more money, they'll be happy, they will for two or three months until that adaptation response comes in. And, and now, now they're used to spending all that money or changing their lifestyle or whatever. This is, this is human nature. So we have to, if you want real happiness, it has to be happiness from within. And I know, I, you've had Marcy on already speaking, so I know that you've probably heard this. I hope you're attending all these sessions in the, in the program because the, the, everybody's got a, a gem to give you maybe, or more. And, and, and you're gonna put together your own happiness improvement program from this. But learn how to be happy in another way because the body is gonna wanna keep that level steady and your happiness is about 50% genetic. So if you want to outsmart that happiness set point, then you can do that by changing one of the circumstances in your life. 
about 10% of your happiness comes from your circumstances. So circumstances are like where you live. Um, and for some people, I, I was a northerner who was much happier in the south because I was always cold up there. Um, it, it, circumstances like being married, we, the data still show that married people are happier. Um, that, that doesn't say marriage makes you happier. It could mean that happier people get married more often. Um, whether or not you have a social network, whether or not you have people around you. And that's becoming lots and lots of studies. Right now, there's lots of studies on what they call the blue zones, the places where people live the longest. And they're finding they have good social networks. They have lots of friends. They, they, they don't sit in, alone in front of the television eating dinner at night. You know, they're, they're out with people talking. They, they have community gardens. They do activities together with, with a goal of being um, a, a more productive member of the community. That's what's going to make you happy. That's what's going to make you happy. Another thing that we know for sure makes you happy is having some kind of faith. And that does not mean religion. That means a belief in something larger than yourself, a purpose a cause, a connection. So the 50% genetic, and, and those of you who have more than one children or are a sibling and have other siblings, you probably noticed that we come in with a certain kind of personality. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, is it nature or nurture? And I would say that you can't, you can't separate the two because when one has a child who is difficult, when one has a child that's intolerant to lactose, say, or can't digest their food. Um, when one has a child that keeps you up all night, um, you don't have the same level of energy than, it, than when you have a child who lets you sleep. So is it genetic? Yeah, a very large portion of it is genetic. And, and the nature and nurture can't be distinguished. I don't know why, but I get questioned on that a lot. So Matt, this would probably be a good point to just step in. People may have questions. I know I go really fast. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, um, the, were there two more? Were there what? Weren't there more slides? There are more slides. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> On the I, nature. Just, I just thought just in case yes. people, are, this yes. is where when I'm, do, when I'm doing a live, you know, yeah, yeah. not the webinar format and I have yeah. a lot of people, a lot of the things that I've talked about so far, I get questions about. So yes. before I go too far, gotcha. this one, people, people always have something to say about this one. So right. maybe you exactly. do. Yes. No, yep. there's, there's actually, there's a yep. few more slides. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's why I thought I was sitting here watching. I was like, I think I got my number wrong. No, it no, says. I always it, over deliver. Here, here's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that about you. Uh, this is from Karen. I know you have a few more points to share about happiness. What are the top five things leaders can do to instill happiness in the company culture? And this should be right in your space, right? This is what you do. Ooh, you this is my space. Yes, exactly. This so you want to answer that now or you want to come back okay. to it? No slides. And who is this coming from? This is coming from Karen. Karen. Hi, Karen. Uh, I teach positive leadership. So you're right. This is from my space. Uh, the, the top five things are, number one, do that appreciation audit and then go out and look for people to appreciate and tell them out loud. And when you tell them what you appreciate, you, you don't just say, add a girl or add a boy. You, 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 you say, Matt, thank you very much. I really appreciate the fact that you got up early this morning and came in here and ready to introduce me and that you've always got so much energy around our interaction. And, and you can also add to that, um, you, there's, an, there's another method where you can um, tie it to your values. So you could say, Maria, whenever I see you jump in uh, and, and do something that's even out of your comfort zone, which I, I know I'm sure is going on now, Maria, right? If when I see you jump in and do something that I know is out of your comfort zone, I have such appreciation for that because it makes you a great team member and it helps us be a better team and better serve the, our, our clients. So you're connecting it to not only what they do, but the larger picture. So I don't know if that's one or two. Um, the, <laughs> the next one is discover people's strengths to really spend time understanding what someone's strengths are. You can either do that through one of the strengths assessments that's out there. 
and you can do it as a team, which I think is a great way to do it. Um, or you can just notice them. And, and there's a special, special listening technique that I teach people to, to very, very deliberately put on, I, I, I do this so they get me, you know, it's like a thing, you know, a new set of ears. So when you are listening to someone, you allow yourself to hear their strengths. So start a sentence with, or ask a question about, um, tell me about something you did where you were proud. And then put on those fancy ears and only listen for their strengths because when you lead someone in the direction of talking about things that they're proud of, they're gonna tell you their strengths. And then you as their leader can begin a discussion about how those strengths can be used in, 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 in the workplace to connect to purpose and to connect to what you're there to do for your customers. Uh, I'm not counting, but I think that was three. Three, yeah, but, I'll say that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, what, we'll else say that's you, three. what else you can do? Okay, you can realize that your body is energetic and that there's an energy field outside your body. It extends pretty far, actually. And you can check what you're broadcasting because emotions are contagious and people don't realize this at work. But every one of us have experienced it. We've walked into a conference room when you go, oh, that must have been a really bad meeting because the vibes are still there. So we can feel the negative vibes. So as a leader, you want to always check what you're broadcasting. So as you're about to walk into a meeting, as you're about to get on a Zoom call, as you're about to, to do whatever it is you're doing next, where you're interacting with people, you check in. How am I feeling? Am I vibrating positive energy? Or am I vibrating negative energy? Or am I vibrating like practically nothing? And then what you do, and this is the fifth way, because you could do this anywhere, anytime. I have salespeople doing this in their cars before they go to make a sale. I have um, nonprofit people doing it before they go to make the big ask for the money. Take your hand, put it on your heart, which starts the flow of oxytocin, the tend and befriend chemical. Take a deep, beautiful breath and think about a few of those things that you appreciate. And you can just stay there for just a few seconds. You don't have to stay there very long. And that's gonna shift the energy in your body. So if you're dealing with people, that's probably, and you were smart to ask for five because those are five of my best tools. Nice, I love that, I love that. And you know, when you were talking about the, um, the uh, you know, I used to manage a real estate office and I would, I was, you know, I would walk in the morning thinking of everything I had to do. So here's, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Right. And so I'm I'm walking in and I'll walk by and I didn't mean to not be friendly or mean to engage people. I was just in my head thinking of all my to do's that I had to get to my desk and write all this stuff down and get, you know, kind of, and, and I noticed that on those days where I did that and just kind of walked in at the office was like super quiet and nobody was really talking. And then, but then on, on other days when I wasn't doing that, then I was just came in and was conversational and I went to my office. Then it was like the whole office was like, there was conversation going on. And, and I, and I, and it took me several probably months, but because I'm sometimes slow, but it took me quite a while to realize that my mood when I walked in, because I was the leader, right. Or the perceived leader, right. In the, in the, in that office, that no, the mood I came in with was the mood that the office took on. That's what people thought that, you know, so you, so a lot of people would think that I was angry or stuff, but if I came in and I'm not, and I don't say anything, then I go straight, they think I I was angry or, or, you know, whatever. And so they just wouldn't approach me. I wasn't angry at all, but it, but it was still, I was just kind of probably emanating this. I'm, I'm busy. I've got things to do. I don't have time for you, even though, and, and, and that, you know, in my head, because I'm running through my to-do list, I, I'm sure that's what I was putting out. So it was interesting when I was a younger manager to notice that. And you don't have to be young to do that. I had two of my very first clients had called me in because things were just not going well in their office. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were losing some customers. There were some problems internally. And I, you know, sometimes I will actually spend a day or two there and just observe and that's exactly, there were two brothers and that's exactly what the older brother would do. Exactly. Oh, really? Yeah. His, his to-do list apparently had something to do with other things that came in through the night. He'd walk yeah. through a room full of people, right. never looking left or right. <laughs> he would just walk through there. Focused. And it took us three months because uh-huh. I observed it. His brother right. confirmed it, but he yeah. didn't. 
he didn't he didn't understand it. it right. took us about three months to get him to walk in and say hello to everyone. Right. Oh my! I I can't even talk about what a change that was. Right. Yeah, After definitely. that happened, we literally tore down the walls that mm-hmm. were between the sales department and customer service department because we began to notice all the other impediments we had to, right. to that free flow of positive energy. The guy was the sweetest guy on earth. He was just focused. And young leaders need to understand. My daughter taught me this when she was 13 mm-hmm. years old because she used to come to the office with me when I couldn't get a sitter and she'd do filing and stuff. And one night I was complaining about something and she said, you don't get it, do you? <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> she said, they look to you. You are not right. like them. Right. And, and I was trying so hard. I was a young leader. I was so, yeah. trying so hard to be everybody's friend. Friend, right. They weren't looking for a friend. They were looking for direction. They were looking for affirmation that they were doing the right job. Uh, they were looking for praise, but you, you, pinpointed it and that's one of the biggest problems leaders have and the other part of that and again because i do so many of these ceo meetings what does your face look like when you're focused it doesn't it looks like you're mad you know you're crunching your face it doesn't unless you got this on your face so sit in the car whatever it takes if you're if you're working at home wait when before you get into that space put the smile on your face i have a thing over here that a client gave me that says They can hear it in your voice. It's a Mm. smiley face mirror, you know, that's up on my computer because you got to remember that that's, that's how people are perceiving you. And you can, you can ramp up your positive energy vibe in just a moment. Right. Exactly. Uh, I had a a friend of mine who always used to joke and say, turn that frown upside down. Right. I mean, so, and put a smile on your face. It's like, you know, is it, you know. Don't take everything so seriously, right? Um, we, Karen had another question, a follow-up question. Do you recommend one personality test over another? Strengths, uh, examples, Strengths Finder, Disc, Briggs, Myers Briggs. I mean, is there anything that you kind of are a yeah, couple I, that you kind I of lean into? Like, I tend to like the work of Marcus Buckingham, and okay. that's the Strengths. Uh, that's the Strength Finder. Finder. Well, 2.0. that used to be Strengths Finder. He's okay. moved on. He's oh, moved okay. On. That's that's his first company. That was. Um, Oh goodness, I can't remember. But he's got another tool now. Just Google Marcus Buckingham, and he's got an, another tool that he's. I take them all, and uh, he's got he's got uh, a, a newer tool. There are lots okay. of tools out there. I I like Strength Finders rather than Myers Briggs because mm. I've and I I know my type well and all that. I I I hesitate. Um, to do personality types like disc and stuff like that because then we put people in a box. And we don't give them room to grow out of that box. But strengths right. finders is very different. The one we use in positive psychology, uh, it's free, or you can pay for a larger thing. It's at vi via strengths via strengths dot org. Okay. Uh, it's free, uh, and it's it's character strengths and virtues. It's very different hmm. than your work personality. What I love about via strengths is that. You can do it. Your spouse can do it. Your older children can do it. Your relatives, can, you can, you can, the people in your office can do it. And it focuses you on character strengths and virtues. And then that opens up the conversation about how the virtues play out in your life. And it's, and again, it's, uh, V-I-A, what's that? V-I-A, Here, let me, strengths. let me, let me put it in the chat. Oh, V-I-A. I, I that for you, couldn't I? No, that's okay. Strength. <laughs> I, if I can spell strength via strength. Let me, let me do it. Let me do okay. It. There you go. And if you do oh, it to everyone. I, I, I just realized that the drop down menu wasn't okay. There you go. Um, and make sure it goes to everyone, not just to the hosts. And if not, I'll copy and paste it, but cause it's kind of the, de- the defaults hosts and panelists, but okay. you can uh, type to uh, everyone. I usually type in the box when I'm talking S T R E N G. Because <laughs> yeah, I was like dot okay. org dot org dot org. Very cool. That's a very cool. Because I'd oh, not have I'd not ever heard of that one. I've heard oh, of the it's rest. Oh, fabulous over. site. I think over six million people have taken this so far. So they're oh, wow. benchmarking it all the time. I oh, love nice. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. Awesome. So thank you for that follow up question. We got people that are really awake and awake and alert this morning. Oh, Should we jump back definitely. into the slides yeah, and yeah, then yeah. see what it brings up the next time? Yes, okay, please. So make sure you, this is my goal in life, is to outsmart my very low happiness set point that I was born with. Now, remember, I told you earlier, 
I was um, raised by lawyers and nuns. <laughs> What are lawyers skilled in doing? Lawyers are skilled in looking for what's wrong. And I also, you know, it's the era that I grew up in. So people were more interested in, in telling us what was wrong with us than what was right about us. And the same thing in business, same thing in business. And so that forms that, that set point when you're young. So find ways to outsmart your happiness set point. Pick up some of the tips we have here. Get yourself some really positive hobbies. Continue with this community and, and talk about happiness all the time. It really, really works. Brag about what you're proud about with, with people that you're safe with and you can love. I have a group of uh, four women that I've been with. We were five and now we're four. We've been together for over five years. We meet once a week at 8.30 in the morning and um, we, we, we brag, <laughs> we give ourselves a safe space to talk about something that we did the week before that we're proud of. And then everybody gives you a little set of accolades because so many of us you know, are sitting at these computers all day long. There's nobody to notice when we do something right. So um, this, we have a safe space and then we share gratitude. And then we have another little process that we do it in the end that uh, projects us out into the future with something we want to have happen. And we have been solidly together, four of us now, for it's well over five years. And we had another member for about three years. So there's longevity in creating a group of people to help you do this. And uh, maybe Matt and I can help you do that with our, with our challenge. Okay, come on, click our work. Okay, meditate. Meditate. Um, there are two things that are absolutely positively, scientifically proven to change your happiness set point and help you create more positivity in your life. One of them is exercise. And it's funny, I, I think I forgot, to, I went over my 18, I think I forgot to put exercise in. Exercise changes the chemistry in your body. One of them is exercise, the other one is meditate. And people get really nervous if they're not meditators and I suggest that they meditate. Meditations have evolved. <laughs> You get an app on your phone if you need one. Um, you, you get a, you, you just the idea that you're sitting down to breathe and to watch the thoughts go by. Don't get engaged with them. And they're gonna come up 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day are gonna keep you busy. So when you're meditating, you're breathing and you're basically watching your breath and, and allowing the thoughts to go by as if they're clouds in the sky. So you can meditate for two minutes and it's going to have a benefit. You can meditate for 10 minutes, it's going to have a little bit more benefit. You can meditate for 20 minutes, same thing. The app that I like, and there's like a bazillion people using it, is called Insight Timer. But there's also Calm. Many of you probably already have these apps. Um, there's the one from, um, uh, it's called 10% Happier. It's from the reporter who chow was challenged to learn how to become happier and became happier. Um, that's called, I think it's called 10% Happier. There are lots of wonderful meditation apps. So making, this is making time for your self-growth. This is making time for your body to, to relax. This is a meditation, a very, very important thing to do. If you can discipline yourself and, and the word discipline comes from the word disciple. Um, so if, you have a dis if you're the disciple of your own vision to be happier in your life, when you get up in the morning, you do not touch your cell phone. <laughs> you do not scroll your social media feed. <laughs> you do not get involved with the world. You first feed your soul. You first feed your happiness and do something that's beneficial for you. And one of those things is meditation. I heard, who was it yesterday? You had a speaker on yesterday. Yeah, it blew my mind. Said um, that, I think it was one of your speakers, that, um, that turning your cell phone on in the morning to look at your email or your um, social media feed is like walking through a casino. Was that? I don't know if oh, I heard no. that yesterday, but <laughs> Did, you know what I, I, you know, I was on LinkedIn yesterday. I was commenting oh, okay. on somebody, I was commenting uh, on somebody's post. And yeah. it, I was just like, 
oh my god that brought back to me all the times when i spoke at because you know a lot of right. speaking engagements were in the las vegas or or atlanta right. city. and when you walk through and there's all the bells ringing and i'm like that's exactly what it's like when the first thing in your morning you turn on that social media feed oh my god definitely yep. so this is the this is the one meditation that is known proven barbara fredrickson uh talks about it uh, Barbara Fredrickson's book, Positivity Ratio and Love 2.0, to, Love 2.0 actually gives you this meditation. This is called the Loving Kindness Meditation or the Meta Meditation. It's very simple. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I live with ease and may I be at peace. So what you do when you're sitting with this is you're letting these words create that feeling of warmth and tenderness and compassion in yourself Start with you, put your mask on first, but then you can say, you can think about your children or you can think about your relatives, or you can, you could say, may he, she, or they be happy. May he, she, or they be healthy. So you want to specify. So you may, may she be happy. May she be healthy. May she be safe. May she live with ease and may she be at peace. And then you can extend that. And the more you do this, the more your generosity wants to extend for the whole world. So you could say this as a prayer for the people in the Ukraine, for instance. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, meditation, and it has blessed the hearts of these science, these scientists that are that are actually putting people on machines and checking. This one really, really works well. So it's called the Meta or the Loving Kindness Meditation. Filter, filter for happy. You know, start looking for the things that make you feel good. Make a love list. That's how this book started. A love list. Make a love list. Make a list of the things that you love. Make a list of the things that make you happy. Make a list of things that you make fr your friends happy. And maybe you could go do some of those things and you get more happy. But start looking, filter for the things in the world. And some of them are little. Some of them are, you know, in the summertime are picking the little dead flowers off the begonias, you know, so that the rest of the begonias will grow big and large. Start filtering and examining your own life for the little things that make you happy. And then learn how to ask better questions. The software for the brain is questions. So the brain, it, it runs on questions. And every quest you have in life is going to begin with a question. So... The qualities of the questions you ask determines what the brain is going to bring into your awareness. So you want to ask questions that are empowering. How can I make this work? How can I make this better? How can I be more brilliant today? How can I create more joy? How can I set the stage for success? How can I stay in alignment with my desires? How can I always come out on top? Instead of what many of us have done for years, um, and I am guilty of this and still once in a while, What's wrong with, oh, how come I'm so stupid? I, that's the one that comes out with technology issues for me. <laughs> oh, how come I'm so fat? Why are my thighs so fat? Women are notorious for that one. How did I screw up? Why am I unhappy? The brain's gonna answer either, either of those questions. So if you're asking a disempowering question and you say, how come I'm so stupid? The brain is going to tell you exactly why you are so stupid. But if you ask the question, how can I make it better? The brain is going to go searching for all the things that you can do that's going to make it better. So the quality of the questions you ask determines the answers you get. Number 17, create a gratitude practice. I'm sure every person that has been on this summit has talked about this, but I'm going to say it again. There are many ways to do it. Have many gratitude practices. One way is to keep a journal and write down things that you're grateful for daily. Another one is to send an appreciation email every morning. That's a great one for anyone's in a family, a group of people, a manager who wants to, to let their people know how they feel about them. Write a gratitude letter. This is, a, this is one of those exercises that is um, uh, uh, evidence-based in the field of positive psychology. So find someone in your life that you've never fully thanked for something that they've done for you and write them a letter. And then if you can, deliver it in person and read it to them. You get a happiness boost of at least two weeks just from doing this one exercise. And think about it. Some of us have lots of people in life that we haven't yet thanked for the role they played. 
So be more verbal and tell people what you appreciate about them. Um, I do something in business for our business people on the phone. Um, I call it an appreciation circle. And at the end of every meeting, if we're in person, people stand up to do this. If we're on the internet, we stay seated because you never know if people have pants on. So we go around the circle. One thing about this meeting that you appreciated, there's a, there's a young group of leaders I work with on a regular basis and they have finally, it's, it's now become spontaneous. I don't have to say, um, and God forbid, I forget to say, let's do our appreciation circle. Somebody says, are we gonna do appreciation? It's, it's a wonderful close to a meeting because of the vibration that it puts your body in. So everybody leaves vibrating the same way by saying, this is what I appreciate about today's meeting. So that's like an amazing thing to do. That's an appreciation circle. Number 18, create islands of sanity. God, we're living in a crazy world. Figure out what makes you feel sane. The walk on the beach, the walk in the park, the, the, it's usually got something to do with nature. A soothing cup of tea, yoga. Find, create your islands of sanity. Write them down, make it clear. Let your friends know. It's almost impossible to stay sane in a crazy world unless you have something, the meditation practice, the, the quiet calm when you're chopping the vegetables. Create your own islands of sanity, knowing that you have control over your mind and you don't have to take in everything that's coming at you. And I do a little over deliver. I could keep going on this because I get about 101 ways. But this uh, the little extra one here, Matt, this connect in with your heart. So this is what we were talking about before. Focus on your heart and radiate love to someone you care about. This stuff works. Allow yourself to feel a sense of ease and radiate love and caring out to others. It's the best thing in the world before you have to make a difficult conversation, make a sales call, come into the office in the morning, do a difficult project. This will put you into the right mode, it's going to get that oxytocin flowing. And the most important thing to remember around this time is that negative emotions can shut your immune system down for six hours. Doesn't always, but can. Has the power to shut your immune system down for up to six hours. But positive emotions has the power to build your immune system for six hours. Optimists live with hope, faith, and joy. They're healthier, more creative, and open to possibility. They're more fun. They have lower blood pressure and cortisol. They have fewer heart attacks. They live, it's now six to nine years longer. Sorry, I didn't change that. So if you want to know more, I have a cool report. I did a special report for you from positive thinking to positive doing, 21 positivity practice to overcome negativity. You can find that on my website, returnonhappiness.com slash positive doing. And I'll type that in the chat box later. Um, the books at Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and all that kind of stuff. The cool thing about this book is this is the only one that I've published. So I have clients that buy them for their whole team, which is, which is fun because it's a fun little book. Please feel free to contact me, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like, and please grow a flourishing life. And Matt, we're going to do away with that right now. I'm going to just hit the stop share button. And I think we still have five minutes left for questions. Yes, and uh, we do have a few more questions and oh, comments. Yay. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I had typed in for everyone just as a, a key in or uh, add on to your um, talk about who, who could we appreciate today, right? Because that was one of yeah. your basically questions. So who could we? So just kind of like just for top of mind, who could we appreciate today? And then I love that uh, that one of the attendees wrote the lecturer and the organizer for giving us this beautiful session that will enrich our lives. I was like, oh, that's a great one. Oh, that that's was like. Cool. I love it. Imme I love immediate. It. That wasn't where I was going, but it was. Um, that was from. I, I'm not gonna. It looks like Liz Castro. It's L Z L Castro, as okay. I believe the well, name. I'm and I'm trying to get these questions read. You know, I I, I can't present and and read chat. Yes, of course. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very challenged that way. Um, so I'm just looking at them right now. Do you yeah. want to pull a question? You want me to just answer, answer these questions, or you want to pull them? What would you want to do? We have five minutes. Yep, there's another question here. Do you see organizations getting back in person team building to bring in play and appreciation, especially with all the changes that have occurred with the company since the pandemic? And please share more about your positive leader. Okay. Um, okay, let me get back to the, let, let's go back to the question first. Okay. Um, what I'm seeing is that the people are in charge. 
So I have one client, for instance, that said, oh, we're all coming back to the office on August 15th. And then people spoke. Right. <laughs> I <laughs> bet. Said, oh, maybe I need to take a survey. <laughs> right. And they're not coming back to the office. Right. Uh, a lot of people want to stay home. Uh, yep. There are people that want to come back to the office. So this is, we're going to have to learn how to live in a, a, a hybrid world. Yes. Um, and what we need to do is get better at Zoom. What we need to, Zoom yeah. has three new tools now, which I mm -hmm. haven't learned yet, uh, yep. that are more about play. Oh. There are lots of things you can do to engage people with one client right now. We're doing an, uh, a values project where mm -hmm. everyone in the organization who wants to participate can participate. And we're giving them, the companies grown so much that even though they have a great set of guiding principles, we want to include everybody. So we get, we're giving everybody the, uh, the possibility of participating in this project to create values, define values, define the behaviors to say that we're doing the values, right? Because they got a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people don't learn some of this stuff anymore you know, in their childhood, in their churches, in whatever. And they, right. come, they come to the workforce and they don't really know what this is about. So we're going through a whole process and people are excited, you know? So mm -hmm. we have to find things like that to do. There are tools. There are tools that come out of the happiness. Um, I can refer you there. There's a woman by the name of Dahlia who created a game called Uppiness. Mm -hmm. And I can, I don't have that link for you right now, but I can connect you with her. She, I don't facilitate it. Um, maybe I will someday, but it's, I have other happiness coaches who do, I know other happiness coaches who do. So mm -hmm. the technology is realizing that we have to come up with more and unique ways to do that. I think that appreciation circle works like wonders for people right. who have the opportunity. The other thing you can do at the beginning of a meeting is ask everybody for one, one thing they're grateful for. Right. Yeah. For something simple, right. That you can just, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But um, I, I, yes, Karen, I do see organizations getting back to in-person to team building at some point uh, mm -hmm. when they feel safe. You know, COVID is out of the limelight right now, but I just heard from a friend yesterday who went to Influence, which is the big uh, public speakers convention for the year, and he came back with COVID. Yeah. I just heard from a friend who has a, a compromised lung and she's protected herself like crazy and she thought it was safe she got on a plane she went to see her daughter she got cold you know so the, yeah we did too seeing that you know it's not in the media but people are seeing that we're not quite done with covid but i i think there's such a push to get i, I do believe we're going to go back to in-person team building but i think we need to feel a little bit safer first so mm -hmm. we want to or do something outdoors we're just something outdoors, yeah, you know, right. where people can, feel, I think people just yep. feel safer outdoors. So while there's that window of time before it gets cold again, might want to think about doing it outdoors. So yeah, it's, uh, there's so much. Positive leader, um, I, at positiveenergizer.com is my information on the positive leader course. I'll just type it in here. And then uh, they, uh, and then while you're typing in there, can you also put somebody, uh, uh, Tony requested that you also just put your website for the free report. So if you can do idea. that. I wonder if there's a way, because I end up doing this a lot. I wonder if there's a way to load that up ahead of time. I don't know. Well, oh, I guess when we were chatting this morning, we could have done that. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, and then Catherine wrote, can Joanne speak again? She is so enlightening. So you're getting lots of love today from well, the Well, thank you. The, I, I, do wanna, I do want to, I do want, I do, but I put the wrong website down there. It's not oh, okay. positive leader. <laughs> my website and it's not and i have put it down wrong i'm so excited i'm live i love it yes live is fun yeah yeah i do miss in person i do like speaking in yeah. person. but you know un until we're ready it's positive energizer because that's what you become it's positive energizer.com there and it actually hyperlinks and, so yeah. and you know what and, yeah and and if you connect with me uh, as a result of, of this, and you want mm -hmm. to talk about that, I'll I'll get you a, a, a coupon code. It's my birthday month, and I like giving stuff away on my birthday. <laughs> I've already had three parties. What what, what month is I think this? I'm this done. is still it's July. This, it's still, it's July. When, when's your birthday? This is my birthday month as well. July second. Oh, mine's the six. Look at us. We're almost oh practically gosh. twins. We're and practically twins. And I have a whole twins. group of friends who are the second, the 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 fifth, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh the ninth, it's, it's like amazing. And I'm always very close with those people. 
Yes. Hey, what, um, Karen asks, uh, what's the best way to connect with you? So what, what's kind of your preferred, like if somebody wants to reach out to you, to you directly, is it uh, to go to the website and hit the contact button? No, is it? No. What? no. no. Okay. Email is, be is best or telephone. So I'll do that. Does so that I miss it, right? I Joanna at returnonhappiness.com. And I'll also put my phone number down here. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. So it's Joanna at returnonhappiness.com. And then it's got your cell phone number there as well. Well, that's my office phone number. Oh, your office phone. Sorry. It said, yeah. oh yeah. Cause I was reading .com. I was thinking that was said mobile. So yes, your office no, phone number. No, it's not my, it's not my mobile. Thank you, Karen. Thank Thank you. Well, thank you for all the people that are saying thank you. I, I, this is, Pretty amazing. I love this. We're yeah. going to have fun next week. I can't wait till we can start telling. I want everybody to come onto the challenge. We're yes. going to see if Joanna can do something for 21 days straight. <laughs> without a break. Without, yes. without, let, you know, without yeah. getting yes. distracted, right? Uh, yes, yes. Without no, we're going to have, distracted. we're going to have fun. And, and, and I've, uh, the, the challenge will be super simple. It will literally be people posting the things, you know, you're going to be guiding it. So, but, but you've got tons of suggestions for ways to find happiness, for ways to find gratitude. So we'll be kind of talking about those and we'll really want to have community conversation around these things. What, you know, yeah. what, what, what's working and comment on, oh, wow. Cause that's how I learn best. I learn best from being around other people and seeing kind of what, oh, wow, they did that. I can do that. Right. You know, they, they reached out to their neighbor to say, thank you for whatever I can do that. Or, you know, it just helps kind of with ideas and thoughts. Um, I sometimes get stagnant in my own thoughts and my own routines. And so it kind of helps me get out of those routines. So that's really a big part of the challenge. That's great. And people are brilliant. You know, if you, yeah, if you look at really life are. that way, that, that people are brilliant and they're always going to bring some ray of brilliance, you know, you can pick up tips all over. Anybody can write a book. I mean, you know, I, I, <laughs> I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> I'm writing another one. That's going to be a, a, a little bit meatier than, than this one. But. Oh, well, I think this one's a good, a great place to start. And so certainly I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm so happy that we connected. Actually, we connected via a, a week ago and, and you, I said, Hey, would you like to be a part of this challenge? You're like, yes, you didn't even hesitate. You're like, yes. I was like, okay, good. We're off to the races. So um, we're going to have a fun time with that. We will be back at the happiness summit live in an hour with the real secret to finding lasting happiness and prosperity with Tara. So we are super excited to have that on. Thank you so much. We're going to see you in about a, a less than a week on Tuesday. Yeah, I think yeah. we're kicking off Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, was it 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock Eastern? I think it's 11, 11 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, so or maybe 10, but we'll put that it. out there. No, no, oh, we haven't really. No, this we haven't is the first about it. This so is the secret, first time. Huh? Yeah, okay. Well, this is the secret reveal right here. So <laughs> so we will be talking about it though. You'll get an email. We'll post it in the in the in the homepage. And then if you want to see any of the past videos, we've had some questions. All of them are on the homepage. So if you just go to the app or you go to the on the, the web-based version, all of them are on the homepage, all the videos. This video will be posted within the next 30 minutes. Okay. So you, you can see the replay, but it'll be available for the whole summit. So well, Certainly tell we, me again, though, because I, uh -huh. I, had a, I had a little work to do in preparing yes. this. So yes. I missed a few of them. Yes. Uh, how long will we keep the videos up? So They'll be can... up through probably through Sunday because we end the summit on Saturday. And then if they want to uh, become through a Sunday. member, if yeah, this through Sunday. So if people want to contribute to this cause, which it truly is, how do we raise the vibration of our communities worldwide? That's why we're called Bright Vibe, to brighten our vibration. Um, so if they'd like to become a member of our community, they can contribute and they can either contribute, you know, we have a suggested contribution or they can contribute whatever they're comfortable with more or less. Okay. And so, and so we want to invite them to become a part of our community and then they can join the challenge. And, and if it, you know, we've been having some technology issues, but we, we, during the challenge, we should be able to give you points and we'll have a tally and we'll make it fun, right? We'll make it for people that are a little bit competitive. We'll, we'll make it, uh, you know, here's some points you get and for people who are more communicative, we'll have communication going on. So it'll be a lot of fun, but the biggest part is, you know, just how do we come together and continue to support each other in a community of positivity, right? Because uh, there's so many ways we can find negativity. To your point, 80% of our thoughts are negative. How can we help start rewiring that? So we have somewhere positive to go on a consistent basis where we're seeing ideas about positivity. We're seeing conversations around positivity. We're seeing conversations around happiness and also diving in to some deeper stuff that's not always so fun, right? You, addressing oh, issues, yeah, yeah, yeah trauma yeah. and other stuff. So it's, it's- Yeah, there's a lot of toxic positivity out there. And I think yeah. all of us who are professionals in the field have to right. say, 
you know, this is not about slapping a yellow smiley face on someone. Exactly. There are some things that keep you away from taking the step towards positivity. But I, I, because I've been through some of that myself, sometimes th there are baby steps you can make in the right direction. And yes. they accumulate over time. So exactly. that's a whole and discussion I we can have next week. Exactly. And I want to read one more comment because I just love this one. Um, it says, uh, and this will be our closing comment for today because I think it's, I really love it. So greetings from the Philippines. So I love seeing that this is already spreading worldwide. I mean, this is so amazing. We had, you know, Ken Honda was our first speaker. He was speaking to us from Japan. Oh, I heard Ken last night. Yeah, yeah. He I was went back to listen to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was speaking from Japan and I didn't realize I had just spaced off. I've been to Japan, but I'd spaced off the time. He was speaking to us his midnight from midnight to 1 a.m. He was presenting to us and you would have thought he had just woken up. I was like, how he amazing so is it? Energy. Yes. I was like, how amazing is it that, that we have great speakers coming in from around the world and we have great community members coming in from around the world. So it says greeting from the Philippines. Thank you, Joanna, for sharing this news, uh, um, news to your newsletter. Thanks, Matt, for a uh, uh, for appreciating my response and mentioning my names. I am now a member of this community. I'm, I, I just love it that this is now worldwide. We just literally, this is our launch week and now it's already worldwide. And I'm just so thankful for that. So, uh, so thank you. I look forward. I. I'm very grateful for you and for all the help Maria has given me because I yeah. sure as heck needed a lot of help. So <laughs> thank you so much to both of you. Perfect. Well, we and will to be all back. of you out there. Thanks for showing up this morning. Definitely. And thank you for all the great comments and feedback. And we will be back live in about an hour. So we'll see everyone then. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. Bye.